So what is going on everybody, Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple released iPadOS 15.3 RC edition which stands for the release candidate which is normally the edition that they're going to release to the entire public right after this update and they released it a few days ago and I wanted to run it through its paces, see if we found anything different, see if we saw any improvements, see if it's worth upgrading to currently and talk about the actual battery performance and then anything else that we saw that changed. I will be making a full 15.3 update video so when it does come out to the public everybody can jump to the channel, see all the new features that started with the first beta all the way till now. But without further ado, let's see if there's anything new with 15.3 RC edition because for the most part this beta program or this update has been all about bug fixes and performance improvements. But let's get into it. So let's get right into this video everybody. I'm going to pull up the iPad screen. I think right around here is where it's going to be showing up. But we'll pull up the iPad screen here and let me know if you guys like this view of the iPad screen or if you like the real kind of top down view that I've been doing previously. I kind of like doing it this way a little bit better just to be a little bit more crisp with the presentation. But let's get right into it and let's go into the build number. So if we go into the settings, go into the about, click on 15.3, you now see that that letter moniker at the end of it that we see during the beta programs is now gone. So we're on 19D49. So this is the release candidate. This is the final release for all beta testers, both in the developer program and in the public beta testing kind of situation. They can download this, play with it, see what they think, because this is what Apple's going to release to the public probably by the end of this week, if not early next week. So look out for Friday of this week to get the final update to all iOS, iPadOS, macOS, tvOS, watchOS devices, you name it. And in terms of the actual size when it comes to this application, you're looking at around five gigabytes. I think for me it was 5.19. I did forget to take a screenshot of it, but, but that is what you're dealing with when it comes to the size of this actual build number if you do want to get it installed. So give yourself around 10 gigs of storage to get that thing installed correctly and make sure that there's no issues happening when you do actually update your iPadOS device. So what I do want to show you real quick is what developers get access to when they do get these updates. So normally Apple does have some release notes, but if I go onto Safari, I already logged in, you can see that with iPadOS 15.3, the release notes, it's pretty much empty. You just have the overview, which lets you know exactly what the SDK provides. And then general, there are no new release notes for this software update. Normally in this little section, Apple does give you the new features that were announced, performance issues that were fixed, and then also some persisting issues which Apple has not fixed yet. And it looks like Apple left this entirely blank. So they left it up to us to kind of find everything in here. This has been happening with this entire 15.3 release. So everything that I mentioned before are things that have been found versus things that Apple really tells you about. So that is what we're dealing with when it comes to the actual release notes. But what I do want to talk about now is the actual battery life because battery life has actually been pretty decent. So if we go back into the settings, let's go into the battery life. Let's go over the last 10 days. We're doing about an hour and 50 minutes of screen on time overall and 13 minutes of screen off time. But I'm going to go into a day where we used a lot of batteries. So on a day like Friday, we used almost 100% of the battery. I want to say that's about 90% of the battery that was used. We got five and a half hours of screen on time. So that's really not bad at all. And most of it was done with sidecar. As you can see, I used sidecar for the entirety of that day because I was using Mac OS with the iPad, with sidecar. I got about five and a half hours of sidecar without plugging in the device until the very, very end, which you can see, I did plug it in at the very, very end. But when it comes to sidecar, again, if you're staying inside of the Apple ecosystem, you get decent battery life. And I did have it on the Magic Keyboard the entire time, which means the Magic Keyboard was also sucking up some juice. So if I had this on a stand that wasn't drawing juice, then I might be able to get, you know, seven hours of screen on time with sidecar. But then if we go on a day like Monday, we used about, I want to say, what does that look like? 65%, maybe 70% battery. And we got four hours and 41 minutes of screen on time. So about two hours on LumaFusion, took up a little less than 40%. YouTube, 24%. You know, Spike Mail, we got about 9% that took it up. Affinity Photo, four minutes of use, took up 2%. So four hours and 40 minutes on a 70% charge, you can probably add another two hours to that to get you near that seven hour mark when it comes to this battery life, which again is all progress. I'm still yet to have a day that crosses over eight hours of battery life. And I'll let you guys know the moment that happens on Twitter. If you guys do follow me on there, it's gonna be linked down in the description below. We're not getting that full eight to 10 hours of battery life. But again, if we do look at this and kind of analyze the battery life here, we could be getting about seven hours of battery life on a day like Monday, where we're using mainly LumaFusion, some YouTube, and all the other stuff in the background like Twitter, Gmail, Find My, Safari, things like that. So from a battery life perspective, we are getting some improvements, but it's still not quite there yet. And then I do want to show off the actual performance of everything. So as you can see, everything is very, very fluid. If you go into the app library, we scroll through it, you can see how fast everything is moving. And then the reason we have multiples of some things is because of the actual icon pack that we have installed on here, which will also link down below if you guys do want to check it out. That's why there's duplicates of what looks like applications, but the files is actually just a shortcut. So the, the darker icon is just a shortcut that's in the app library. 
but you can see that everything is very, very clicky, very, very responsive. If I want to open up Safari, swipe, swipe down, you know, maybe open up a pages or something like that. Everything works how it's supposed to, which is good to see. And you can see that we are getting some splash screens with some of the Apple native applications. So things like getting started in pages and stuff like that. So overall, from a performance standpoint, it's been great. The one bug that continues to persist is the storage bug, right? So if I go into, let's go back to general, let's go to the iPad storage. It's calculating the storage size. You can see that the bar is always always at the very edge as if the iPad is totally full. According to this, I have about 30 gigs of open storage that I could be using. So the bar should be around here. So I don't know what's going on with the storage bug. Now you can see that my two main sources of storage being used up are LumaFusion and the files. And that's because LumaFusion does a lot of redundancies with their files. So whenever you, so whenever you use a video file from your photos library, then you put it into LumaFusion. LumaFusion saves that as a totally separate file. So it's like you have two videos, one in the photo library and then one in the file system and then one in LumaFusion. So there's a lot of redundancies that I'm trying to figure out. So if you guys have any LumaFusion tips on how to handle kind of storage management with LumaFusion, let me know. I've learned a couple of things here and there to help clear out some cache, which is what's taking up a lot of space. But again, the storage bug is what continues to persist which is not giving you an accurate reading of what's going on on the iPad. So that is the only real bug that I've noticed that is, that's really worth sharing. But overall, very crisp, very happy with what Apple's kind of showing us with 15.3. Now I'm just hoping 15.4 gives us something a little bit more tangible and something worth kind of sharing and something to be proud of, like universal control. But let's get out of this view, go to the normal view and finish up this video. So as everybody saw, 15.3 RC edition didn't bring any tangible differences. This whole update has been a little bit wishy-washy in terms of new feature sets and things like that. I was really expecting Universal Control to at least make some sort of appearance or some sort of beta appearance in the 15.3 update schedule. But as of now, there's been nothing new added. There's been some verbiage changes, which I mentioned in the past. There's been a lot of performance improvements. Like this by far is the most stable beta that I've personally tested. So if you guys do wanna put it on your main device, by all means go for it. It does have my stamp of approval. I've never had anything that has deterred me from like a data loss perspective, from a productivity perspective. There's no data corruption happening at all. So if you guys do want to take that risk, just know that there's always that chance that's going to lock up on you with the beta program and they're not responsible for that. But again, I've never dealt with it. A lot of people that I know haven't dealt with that at all. And 15.3 in the beta program has been running very, very smoothly, whether it's the first beta or the RC edition. But like you saw, not too many tangible differences. Apple's is getting ready, I guess, for 15.4. And in 15.4, they better drop something special because last because two years ago with 13.4, we got cursor support. Last year, we got some improvements throughout the 14 throughout the iPadOS 14 update. And this year with 15, we haven't really gotten much. We got the main updates that came with iPadOS 15, but outside of that, nothing too crazy. And we really haven't gotten too much new with iPadOS 15, at least on the iPadOS side. But again, let's hope Apple does bring us universal control or some game changing feature, something to really kind of be proud of with iPadOS 15 in the 15.4 update. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, leave a dolphin if you guys made it to the end of this video. And also leave some comments below. Are you guys in the beta program? What's stopping you from going into the beta program? Do you just not care enough? And also comment below some new video ideas because we have a bunch of accessories that I wanna go over. But if you guys have certain applications or certain software or something that you wanna see work on the iPad before you really commit to it, let me know and maybe we'll make a video out of it. But like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, I am out of here.